What if I told you that I never would have made it? Made it. Uh, if he never came to take me. And I really thought I didn't need shaving. Shaving. Yeah, yeah. Now I need him on a daily. I've been around, round, round, round. So many people let me down, 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 down. down. There's no Giddy family, what's up my beautiful people? Welcome back to another edition of the Table DC podcast. Thank you so much for joining us live and direct. It's your boy, the one and only Sema, and we're here with... Oh, <laughs> I'm in my own world. Hi, Danielle, it is I. Hey, I. it's Mazita. Well, we have the lovely Mazita. <laughs> okay, so as you can see, we have a lovely guest with us. So obviously later on, she'll be explaining some stuff. And yeah, it's going to be a quite cool podcast. Something quite different. And if you were watching our previous um, podcast as well, please go check that out in case you haven't as well. But during the last four or five minutes, um, I'm not sure if you, if you remember or you recall, but we, we were actually speaking to do like, with, like finance topics. We were talking about money at the end of... Did we? Yeah, yeah, we did, we did. And it's so funny that now, guess what? This one's going to be about... Oh, you're hella cheesy. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> but yeah, I, I, I didn't clock that, you know? Yeah. Yeah, literally, uh, but you have to like, pick up all, all these little pieces, all, all of these little details. Sorry, so, I turned into DL. So, yeah, Sorry. most definitely. So, yeah, without, without further ado, yes. we're going to get me. Like, we're going to get right into yeah, it. We're going to get right into it. Well, today, like um, Simmons mentioned, we do something slant and different. We're mm. going to be talking about everything that we need. Well, the one thing that we all need. Everything, everything that we like. What is everything that we all like? that we need in our lives. Something well, that allows us to survive. What's one thing that we work hard for that a lot of people get into disputes for? You know, you know the one thing that makes you the boss. The boss, that's one thing the boss that of makes your own you... destiny. <laughs> for real, for real, for real, yeah. But yeah, it's, money, it's plain money, old money, money, finance, whichever word you want to put on it. And yeah, like, like that's literally the foundation of our societies. You know what I'm saying? Like it can literally break, make, make or break, or break you. you. But that's obviously the reason why we've decided to bring it on such a Christian, uh, on such a Christian platform. Reason being is because obviously we understand that money base plays a big part in even just like the 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 general like overseeing of our churches as well to make sure that get me our, our lights stay on, for example. But then also for members themselves sure. to be able to come, to be able to travel, to be able to finance, to come, to be able to tithe, whatever, just to be able to work and be blessed by the strength that God has given them in the first yes. place to be able to go out and even pursue their, their goals, whatever, obviously, and that's going to be through uh, gaining money. So that's why we decided to have our lovely lady in the house who's definitely going to be answering um, a series of, of, of questions that we have obviously in store for her. So yeah, guys, obviously, uh, just stay tuned, keep it locked. And by the way, if you have a like and subscribe, please do that as well. Yeah, so, <laughs> disclaimer. Would you like to tell us, Mazita, like, you know, just a little bit, or just like, in regards to who you are? And, um, can I? What do you do? <laughs> 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 or just give a little, like, um, kind of overview in terms of um, why 
sorry, sorry. Um, how, why is okay? Why is money so important to us? I know it's a really, really vague, massive, or finance. Yeah. So important for Why us. is finance so important? Because finance helps us to survive. We need money to eat. We need money to live. We need money to do so many different things in this life. And mm. so um, everyone is always cautious or, or, or aware about money. Yeah. So yeah. and for you to be, um, you know, for you to have money, you have to be financially aware and be able to sustain your finances and even have some finances coming in yeah. so that you can yeah. provide so that's true that's true in fact i even forgot myself i'm gonna play a little game quick time yeah yo 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 why not before we get into like the, the, the gist of the gritty. subject the little the real meat do you know what i'm saying like obviously let's 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 warm up a little bit first and let's get like give me our juices flowing basically and yeah let's so we're gonna do a word association game and literally the the aim of the game is as the title is Word association, so you're gonna tell us, Mizia. Yeah, 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 of course. So, obviously, like, <laughs> yeah, 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 of course. Sorry. I know Mizia is there, but I like to talk to the, the <laughs> camera sometimes. But yeah, now I want to turn to obviously Mizia, and yeah, literally, I just have some I'm words here. I think obviously Danielle has some words there as well. So, whichever okay. word that comes into your mind, my once my obviously I say a word, you just repeat, you just say what's, what's on your mind. First, it comes to your mind. Yeah, what's the first thing that comes to your mind? I'll basically. time you like five so, seconds. Yeah, five seconds, five seconds. Yeah, cool. All right, here it goes. Auction. Oh, auction? That's a meme. What? <laughs> what goes into your mind? Because obviously auction is obviously buying buy, buy, buy off some okay. bids. Bidding, Bidding. Yeah. okay. Uh, broke. <laughs> mm. Minus sign. <laughs> Minus sign. <laughs> interesting, interesting, interesting. Wealth. Um, riches. Riches. Decent. Okay, 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 okay. Um, mates rates. Hmm? Mates with you know obviously when like you have a business for example and somebody else obviously who's supposed to be a friend of yours wants to come and say oh yeah like give it to me for this guy right like, like I have yeah. to pass on that one. You have to pass on that one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool, cool, cool. Mates cool, with cool, who? Cool. So yeah. They pay the whole price. Yeah, come on, yeah. Yeah. the whole price basically. <laughs> Support the business. Yeah, yeah. I, I would say, I would say joke thing, joke thing. That's too that's too well though. Yeah. When yeah. is mates rates mates rates ever? Allowed, it or should like, it is shouldn't it really be. Yeah, it shouldn't really be. Um, I mean, people do it just to be nice, but I mean, nice isn't gonna help your business survive mm. as well. So, um, so many businesses have crashed because people are, you know, giving out hefty discounts to their families and friends, mm. and you know, so a business definitely needs money to survive. So, really, if you if you have friends that are, um, have a business, really try and support them. Um, you know, don't try and go there just because of the discounts, you know, because they need to survive as well, so. 100%. Mm. And is there a way, like, if, okay, so let's say, for example, if someone is, like, given, like, a little discount, is there a way, as a business owner, to kind of retract that or try and even out that um, that imbalance when the money comes, mm. comes in? I mean, I'm sure there's various ways, but usually if you're doing it from the goodness of your heart or just as a goodwill gesture, really, it doesn't always come back i mean you could make up for it but it's most times you're doing it and it's not actually coming back so mm. you know it's just from the goodness of your mm. heart really yeah i mean there's ways to make up for it of course but um generally when you're giving someone a discount really yeah that's, that's it. true <laughs> so. that's true i guess it only works well with like if you're like for example in fashion if you're in fast fashion and you have the capacity to throw out a 50% good old fashioned yeah. over doing up 90% Black Bro. Friday deals and kind of thing, you <laughs> know. But that's because you have that, um, you know that you have an audience that outweighs the possible, um, I'm not, see, my my knowledge of finance is horrible. <laughs> that's the like, that's, that's that's Yeah, the margin, the show, that's why yeah, that's the margin kind of thing with regards to like, okay, even though let's say you're doing 70% off, mm. but you know you have 50,000 customers that we buy on that day. So regardless, mm. the profits will work best in your favour yeah. kind of thing. Yeah, for real. So for yeah, you've got to be real mindful of that. Did you have some words as well? To um, yeah, I had what, bank. Money. <laughs> yeah, of course, that's the one main thing that backs up. Bank. bank. This should be money. Investment. Investment. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Investment. Okay. Nice. Do you know what? Yeah. When you when you say investment, I start thinking charts and charts. graphs. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Okay. 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 <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> why do you say? Why do you think that? Mm. I don't know. It's just an association. Yeah. Just yeah. an association, really. So. Okay. Because obviously, when it comes to investments, you have to look 
obviously of the at the backstory of the investments yeah, exactly. and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, and yeah. It's, yeah. it's called technical analysis, but yeah, that's a different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Chris is the background. Sure, like. sure, 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 sure. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Interesting. So yeah, thank you so much for obviously your participation in the game. That was just a quick little icebreaker, if you wish. Was obviously, like I said, to get our juices flowing. Mm -hmm. So yeah, okay, that was nice. That was nice. So um, so yeah, what do you do? You have do you have any personal experiences of why you think money is important? Like. How's, how's money's been helping you? To be honest, in my adult life, in my adult life mm. money is holding me by yeah. the neck. In my adult life, <laughs> I have it, but it's not staying. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's the thing. Um, I think my rela my relationship with money, yeah, it's like I like to think that I have a hold of it, but it has a hold of me rather. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and it's like I'm oh, disciplining it. Like you it's know, every month I'm gonna do better. Mm. Like, and I'll buy a journal, yeah. yeah. I'll buy a journal. And I have like. I wish I brought it. Uh, I wish I brought it because I have a journal and I put like the month and I put like my expenditures and my savings and then what I'm at. Ask me if I go into it within <laughs> that month to go and write down what I've been spending. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. I like I do this thing where I do saving goals. So like, no spend March for example. I okay. don't spend money on chocolate buttons, even though I'm vegan. Um, no taxis and like no cinema or just like extra shopping kind of thing. Okay. So I take that off every day and if I don't do that. If I don't spend, then I treat myself within the second day. Mm. I've already spent it on taxi to go somewhere because I didn't <laughs> manage my time, for example. So, yeah. Yes, thanks, Chris. <laughs> but, <laughs> uh, but, yeah, no, um, I, I want to get better at it. I, and it's like I have these conversations with myself all the time, but. Yeah, it's just not sticking. Mm. It's just not sticking kind of thing, you know, <laughs> and it's like yeah in that now that you I'm working and whatnot it's like even with like the income you don't want to go further down the line you yeah. want to just go increase increase kind of thing but is that when your in income increase, what they say when your income increases your expenditure shouldn't as well so they increase yeah or something like that so I yeah think that's got to do with like lifestyle inflation yeah right? but mm. then you get hella excited like, oh what yeah meals on me yeah. don't worry yeah. about right. it right. Right. oh right. just right. just put it on the tab kind of thing you know <laughs> so it it's just that sometimes i wish that I had these habits in uni because it was just free money coming in. So if I had had those habits mm -hmm. um, at that time, I feel like I could have eased into adult in life, all right. But um, yeah, my dad's on my neck with savings, so I need to. Mm. Yeah, but I'm I'm not the greatest, so I would say like mm. I'm trying, but sometimes I just let things slide. Like, oh, do you know what? I I, I deserve this. Mm, yeah, indeed, so indeed. I'm not, yeah. No, I hate you stuff. <laughs> no, but for me, I feel like money is definitely absolutely important. Is money is crucial. As you get older, it becomes more evident in our lives, obviously, yeah. that, we need, that we need money. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. obviously, the more money that you have, the more creative you get with your money. This the more, the more, The more you start saving, the more it starts to save your life. You get me? Like, is if you it? save your money, your money will save you in the future. Um, yeah. And it's like, for me, I've already started to invest on the side. Obviously, like, that's that's going to be a different conversation oh, altogether. But, <laughs> you know, like, no, no, like, literally, I just, I just got a credit card the other day. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, like, all of these things, I'm already, like, putting into practice why because i've seen where my family have come from and you know what i'm saying like they haven't quite lived the best life mm. you know what i'm saying they're quite limited and mm. for me it's like money leads to financial freedom i, I want to be able to travel to mm. anywhere i want do you know what i'm saying yeah. to different continents so for yeah. me to be able to do so what must i do i must be smart with the money that's coming in and to understand that yeah like they must even though there's a nice thing on the shelf mm. whatever it could be in selfridges or even in primark like, if I need to get that, then I will get that. But if I don't, then why am I spending on it? Do you know what I'm saying? Because mm. each penny really counts, especially, like, living in a city such as London. Yeah. And, you know, Corona has taught us a lot of things as well that we shouldn't even necessarily just rely upon one. Because there's people that say, like, just having one job is J-O-B, job of just over broke. So why not just use your resources oh, and your youth as well? And your youth, because obviously I'm only 25. Um, I know I look younger than that, but, yeah. <laughs> but, like, I mean, but yeah, 25, so it's like, get me, like, use your creativity to find, like, a little um, second job or, or side hustle, maybe. You never know how far that can take you, and yeah, like, let your life be an inspiration to others. But I've realised that as well, if you want to be, if you want to have impact as well, you have to have, obviously, a po your pockets of a decent size as well, because no one really wants to hear, listen to somebody who, obviously, is not, obviously, focused on, get me finances or whatever else it may be so yeah very very, very important i look you back to differ yeah back to differ get me okay no, i don't <laughs> like obviously you can counter it, mm. but like, i feel like i'm just a very much my mindset is 
everyone likes the idea of money, mm. but I feel like I'm such a like a free person. I'm like, I don't really care. Mm. Like money's there, but there's other things to life, you know, kind of thing. Um, and I feel like particularly as being young as well, you not to say like you should like spend and just live your life freely, but like don't be so fixated on trying to um, create another stream of income mm. because um, even though it'll work out in the future, but it's just just try and just ease yourself to find out what works best for you, so that when you do start making money, you're you're enjoying that rather than I've been mm-hmm. hustling for the past two to three years. That's, like I just have to keep going, the thing, and then though. you're crying when your money's coming in. Like. You're saying that you're, you you live a free life is good. I also deem my my life to be a life of freedom currently. But then guess what? The choices that you make now will also determine your tomorrow. Yeah. So why don't you f- fix boundaries within yourself and then find that freedom within those boundaries? Yeah. Because you're saying you're, you're free now, how long would you be able to sustain that same freedom you claim? Yeah. But don't kill yourself if you're 18, though. Hey, yeah, of course, of course. Like, That's definitely not what I'm preaching either. I'm not preaching, obviously, overkill. I'm definitely preaching. Take your time, obviously, steadily, but learn, though, innit? What's your experiences with, so, like, money and stuff like that? It's a journey, really. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> mm. It's a journey. Um, you know, I think where you look at how you've survived financially Mm. um, and you look at where you want to be, um, definitely you realise that some changes have to be made. Some, um, some, you know, some expenses don't need to be made. Right, right, yeah. (laughs) Um, Yeah, yeah, some decisions, yeah, some decisions definitely have to be made. Um, Some discipline is needed Mm. because um, really, I know money comes and it goes but um sometimes like this year we never knew that we were going to be faced with this virus Mm. and we didn't know that people would um be faced with so many job security issues um redundancy health issues and so um having money yeah having money that you've kept aside really does help Mm. so yeah Yeah, we're definitely going to touch on that emergency savings and that whatever we'll just (laughs) <laughs> money for a rainy day and yeah that's really important okay cool sweet so yeah obviously since you've all shared our little personal experiences how we think money is important i guess it's time for us to move on to the Question. next section so which is obviously the the q a okay so you mentioned sections i mean um questions do you wanna no you can go ahead yeah <laughs> Yeah. Okay, cool. I was just going to ask you to introduce something. Oh, that's sorry. No, I'm just waiting for you. <laughs> no, go ahead, Flo. Yeah, okay, cool. So, yeah, this is basically the a Q&A time. And uh, we've had um, several questions that we've jotted down from um, on my behalf. Obviously, questions that I have longed to um, have wanted fan basically to find answers for. Danielle also has got her list of questions as well. And obviously, um, Kaede, who's typically at the back of the camera, we don't know where he is at the moment. He also has uh, <laughs> his questions. Food, he also has obviously, his questions, obviously, that he's given to us, obviously, to ask, to, um, yeah, to ask our lovely Mazita here, our guest for tonight. So, yeah, so without further ado, we're going to go into the very first question, which is, how much should I be saving? Um... It's a good question. Mm. Um, it really, um, there's no really fixed amount that you should save a month. Um, there is this kind of rule that um, this 50, 30, 20, um, and it's a percentage. So 50% would be your, your essential spends, mm. your essential expenses. 30% would be based on your non-essentials, I guess just some income, like some spending that you can do on the side, and then twenty percent would be your savings. So some people stick by that tw- that rule that you save twenty percent of your income. Some people say that's not realistic. Some people say just look at the spare income that you actually have because mm-hmm. if you try to confine yourself to do okay, I'm going to save twenty percent, but is that twenty percent if you're saving that aside, are you going to be struggling? Yeah, mm-hmm. you know so. Um, I think the general advice is to look at the spare income that you actually have. So the income that you are not spending on essentials, um, what what of that can you keep aside? Mm. And when you when you start with that, I mean, surely you, you'll be able to get better with it. Mm. Um, you can also set um, emergency funds as well, like you were saying before. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, this year has been a tough year. 
there's been people that's been living on their their savings yeah you yep. know but if they never saved they yeah. wouldn't have lived on anything yeah. <clears throat> so it's definitely important to save it's definitely important to have some sort of emergency funds that you're able to access at any given moment should anything go wrong financially um but there's no really specific amount that you should save you know it's just advised that maybe 20 percent. some people do 10 percent. but really i think realistically if you look at the spare income that you have then you know that will help you to start saving mm. yeah 100%. Very, very good response you, with, yeah. with that could because um obviously that would be subjective based off um how much you actually earn mm -hmm. so could it be that that percentage for saving could be higher than 20 percent, and rather you can flip it the other way around yeah you yeah. could do you could do more so it's just about being realistic about what you actually need to survive to get you through mm -hmm. until your next set of income comes in mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. if you are looking at it realistically and you say that okay i can survive on i mean doing you if you can survive on 30 percent, then you know then you can save the rest if you if you wanted to do that if you wanted mm. to push yourself that much you could do that but um it's really based on everyone's in, um, individual needs um you know their requirements the things that they they spend on yeah. that are essential you know once you look at that you'll be able to know what's the best amount and i i, I say that you should start small as well because saving can be hard especially if you've never done it before mm. Yeah. It can be really hard. It can feel like, you know, <laughs> it can feel like you're putting yourself in some kind of bondage. Um, but if you if you are consistent and you're able to save a little bit, you know, one day it will grow and you will have something there saved aside, you know. So yeah. it always it, it's starting is always good. Yeah, know. good. Yeah, good. It's good. Yeah. It's hard, but, but it's, if you yeah. start small, if you start off realistically, definitely you'll get somewhere. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I think more time is just that that three, four weeks away is so far. <laughs> it's like, do you feel yeah. I can say till then? And yeah. yeah. Even, I mean, just saving a little bit, really, even if it's like £10 a month or something, okay. you know, even if you start off with that, that will yeah. get you somewhere. And I think people get encouraged when they see how much they've actually put aside. Mm. And so when they see how much they put aside, then, you know, that encourages them. They feel like, oh, I want to do more. I want to yeah, put more money aside, yeah. you know, so definitely. But you should always save, definitely always save because, um, you know, some people say, oh, I'll save when I earn more money. Trust me, when you earn more money, yeah. you will not save. That's saving. the thing, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like life becomes more real typically, isn't it? Exactly. When the emergency starts saving, to earn more. saving is, is a discipline act. Mm. It's not just something that you do. It's actually discipline. So if you can save with the small bit of money that you have, then when you have more money, you'll be able to save more, more. as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, there's yeah. people that win the lottery and they go bankrupt in such a short time. Wow, wow. So that, that tells you that really is about your discipline. Yeah, 100%. Mm. 100%. Yeah, it's, it's got yeah. to do with discipline. It's, it's, it's a mindset thing, basically. And yeah. Yeah, it's basically about delayed gratification as well, not instant, you know, just like the idea, knowing that, yeah, like my money has to work for me in the long term. Because yeah. essentially, if you're not saving, then what? What can you really do? Do you know what I'm saying? You're just putting yourself down more and more and more and more. Yeah. So, yeah, I Definitely hear you on that. Let's have a rich uncle yeah. or father somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> Throw you yeah. his inheritance money. You'll, you'll, you'll be a rich auntie. Don't worry about it. Um, yeah, that's <laughs> why I aspire to be rich auntie okay, vibes. Yeah. Real, 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 real. Do you want to go ahead and pause the second question? Um, I'm just throwing it at me. I'm just kind of flowing kind of thing. Mm. Um, oh, no, yeah, I literally forgot I was going to ask you, you know. Um, Okay, so okay, so at what point? I don't know if I might be stealing this from you, but at what point can you go from like saving to investing? So you, let's say you have like I don't know a certain amount of like money. Mm. Um, at what point is it? Is it subjective? At what point you it'd be best to invest, or is it like you can invest at any point or any time? Not really. Or, like, um, if you have spare income, you know, invest that. You know, if it's, if it's a desire f for you to invest, then mm. definitely if you have some spare income. I think um, one of the general advices is based on if you have spare income. Because um, investment is... I mean, everyone gets excited about investments, yeah. but people forget that investment is a risk. And so it's not... It's not, um, it's not going to be, like... It's not guaranteed. You know, it's just expected. So... Um, I think start if you're going to go into investments, you want to start small. You want to start with, 
um, being able to sacrifice, something that you're able to sacrifice, mm. so your, your spare income, really. Yeah, so basically income that you don't see yourself needing. Yeah, you know, so if you, if you were, God forbid, if you were to lose it, you wouldn't feel some way about mm. it. Yeah, yeah, you wouldn't feel impacted yeah. about it. Because yeah. I was doing some research for um, a young one, and um, um, uh, what do you call it? Jerry has a, um, Jerry, uh, shout out to Jerry. He has a, <laughs> had a blog post yeah, about Yeah, Mr. Millionaire. Mr. Millionaire, yeah, yeah. that's it. And um, one of the things that kept propping up whenever I was doing research was that you should read into positive mindsets and positive mm. um, framework of mind because, um, yeah, like you said, you should, more or less practice today gratification and mm-hmm. always have an optimistic um, thinking and be critical of yourself when it comes to putting in money. Mm-hmm. Like people get really excited when something goes down or a sale goes down, something like that, and then they realize they, you know, they make so much money from it, and then you're like, all right, next time, <laughs> <Exactly>. wash, <laughs> you know, and then yeah, kind yeah. of thing. So yeah, definitely yeah. having that investment requires myself. research as well. well yeah, it does, it does, yeah, definitely yeah. need to research. Definitely, and just knowing who and where to where to start because mm-hmm. you ha- you hear this idea of you know investment and revenueing, um, um, revenueing. Um, <laughs> this is so terrible. <laughs> Sorry, my mind has gone black. Um, <laughs> Uh, revenue making um, because <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm not sure where you're coming I'm to. I'm just trying this. to basically yeah. generating now, it's generating okay. money, generating um, finances, you know. So, um, it's like everyone has this idea of wanting to generate more money to themselves, mm. but it's like where to start, or like I like the idea of it, but I don't know, like who, what, where kind of thing, you know. Yeah, so. I think for me, investing is definitely about knowing obviously your risk, your risk tolerance, and I think investing also has a lot to do with starting it from a young age as well, because they say that if you start it young, the better, because obviously there's a large time scale sometimes. So it's like if you invest 200, 300, 100 pound a month, um, at the age of 20, you're more likely to see a lot more capital gains compared to somebody who's obviously um, investing at 35, they'll have to um, invest probably more aggressively if they also want to see like a good retirement and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I also saw a tweet where a wise man once said, yeah, listen, just don't worry about obviously like your money fluctuating up and down just put it into a, an account automate the, the investments the money that you're putting in it and just watch yourself becoming like a, a wealthy man or a wealthy woman in the years to come 20 30 years mm-hmm. so literally that's what investing is about like you said investing your, your spare change of your spare income but then still living life normally and probably be like living in like just underneath your your means whatever and yeah yeah, yeah i'll say never be pressured to invest because like i said before mm. It requires research. Mm-hmm. Um, it's never too late as well. So even if you're starting at a later age, at least um, you're starting. Yeah, at least start, but yeah. you also want to do that research as well, just to make sure that you know what you're getting into. Mm. Because <coughs> there's been so many um, people getting into things and horror you stories. know, yeah, so many <laughs> horror stories. Yeah, that's yeah. a good one. <laughs> yeah, so ma- so many horror stories and. Um, you know, it's, it's really good to do your research as well. Um, look at other people's success rates as well. You know, trusted people as well, not, mm. yeah. you know, yeah, broads. Yeah, not, not <laughs> that. Okay. What if people bring, like, I don't want to use the word pyramid schemes, but if, wow. so, say someone brings, like, oh, yeah, this is going to guarantee to make yeah. money. Yeah, all those oh, ones. Them ones that, add, yeah. Yeah. I know there's been some, like, ske- um, things. I'm not, I don't want to mention the name of the schemes, but... <laughs> Like, Chris is like, go on, say it. There's some that obviously people have <laughs> lost money, whereas some people have gained money because obviously they, they jumped onto it fast, but no, but ultimately it was a scheme at the end of it. Mm. So, like, and also forex trading, because I know a lot of people are like, oh yeah, forex trading, let me do trading, this trading, that. Obviously, it does work. I do know forex trading works, but like, there's a degree of effort you need to put into it. What would you say to those kind of people? Again, it's down to research. Mm. Um, you know, someone sells you an idea today. Do you just jump on? Mm. Exactly. You know, do you just jump on because of what you heard? Yeah. Like, find out more. Um, look at who else is doing it as well. Who yeah. else is succeeding from this thing? Because at the end of the day, no one jumps into an investment for it to fail. You're mm. jumping to it for it to succeed. So you want to look at the success rates. You want to look at success stories, like real people. Not you know, because these days now you hear some some fake stories some mm. fraudulent stories yeah. and you know people jump in and before you yeah. know it it's crashed yeah so sad, definitely yeah. take time to research before you jump into 100%. things ask the necessary questions for and for all, for you know all. yeah so. i've got i've got a testimony about fox trading so i think two i think i was doing it about two three years ago but i only did it for like a month and a half in it 
um, I actually made quite a few, a, a lot of money on it. Not too much, but yeah, like, but then I realised that it was very volatile. As I was like making my wins, I was losing a lot as well. So obviously, like, I just like, freaked out, whatever, didn't touch it again. But obviously for people out there who are selling like folks trade, folks trading um, seminars or schemes, let me just tell you, you don't need to pay no one a thousand pounds to do it. Literally with folks trading, a lot of, a lot of the information is already out there, it's, in, it's on the internet. All you gotta do is just download an application, you know what I'm saying, and, li and literally get yourself started with a demo account and then after, when you feel confident, a couple months after, then obviously you get into the real thing. But yeah, that's just basically with folks trading. However, I do feel like when it comes to just investments, like obviously that's much more safer. Trading is much more risky, of course, but the investing is just putting your money into an account, letting it grow, and then obviously that just yeah. grows organically, really. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah, I hear that. And as we were thinking, talking about this, I just, you guys can correct me if I'm wrong with the story where the guy literally saw the, he saw the Twin Towers, just the um, the plane was coming in and he saw the plane was going into Twin Towers and he puts, I don't know if he invested money into it mm. and he made bank from it. I don't know if anyone is aware of the story. Everyone's looking at me like I'm crazy. Okay. Mm. <laughs> but, okay. Um, I think it was that he was walking down and he saw the plane going into mm. the Twin Towers. I double check my story anyway. I don't want to say anything false, but um, I think sometimes for some people it's luck, but don't bank on luck anyway, Sha. But um, yeah, the guy realised that it was going down, so he put some money into it and he actually made a lot of money. The guy is making bank, but wow. yeah, that's something that I was thinking about. But don't do it on luck, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I hear that still, I hear that still. Yeah. Well, yeah, okay. So, um, oh, sorry, go ahead, I'm just cutting in. No problem, yeah. So yeah, I also have another question for you. So, um, I always hear this word and it's always been like preached around, it's been mentioned you know, obviously in the world of finance that it's got to do with credit. So basically, are you able to just like, give us a brief outline of what the word credit is, what it means and basically just what, why is it important? Yeah, um, credit is important because um, lenders look at this to assess um, whether they should lend to you based on your historic, your past um, records. So the decisions you've made financially in the past. Mm. So it's very important to have um, good credit um, in case you're going for a large purchase, such as a house um, or whatever. So so long as a large purchase or so even a small purchase, um, people do look at that, and they'll, they'll you know the lenders do look at this and they will determine whether they want to lend to you. Mm. So it's definitely good to um, have good credit. You definitely want to have good credit, mm. you know. <laughs> so okay, so what, how, nice. how would be best to, because um, I don't know, maybe you can tell me if it's true or false, but let's say, for example, you, a person has, like, they've paid off all their um, their debts kind of thing. So, like, student, like, student, no, student, there's credit card debts that um, banks will be selling to students. I beg, don't get that credit card because they love doing it. Your first year uni, yeah, oh yeah, don't worry, five hundred pounds, thousand pounds overdraft, and yeah. then yeah, you know. Um, so you've paid off those debts um, and kind of thing. But that does does that increase your um, credit score or um, better your credit score once it's been paid off? Yeah. So when you um, so the credit score, the credit rating that you get yeah. is based on the decisions you've made in the past, such as um, if you've been lent money before, if you've borrowed money before, if you've had an overdraft, if you've maybe made a large purchase or any type of purchase really that has to go through um, the credit um, ratings mm -hmm. or go through your credit report. So um, the less debt you have on there, it can be better, but really what lenders want to see is that you are able to pay off your things. debt on oh, time. Okay. Mm. You're not missing any payments. You are not um, defaulting. Mm. You know, those are the kind of things they want right. to see. So they want to see that, okay, even if you've had debt before, they want to just know that you've been you're paying, paying it, it off consistently. consistently. You've yeah. not missed payments. You've yeah. not had to default or anything like that. Yeah. So, yeah. Oh, okay. Do you know what is, yeah? Do you know what I've realised? Side note, yeah? The system wants us to be good members of the system to be for us to be able to profit and benefit from the system. Huh? I don't know if that makes Sorry. sense. Sorry. Does that make sense? <laughs> so the system that we're living in now, so irrespective of where, obviously, where you live, it could be obviously in the States, whatever, but right now we're in the United Kingdom. We live on the system, right? And obviously the system requires of us, obviously, to be workers, to obviously get credits, right? And obviously we need to be good um, stewards of our credits mm -hmm. for us, for us to obviously yeah. benefit from it. And basically that's what it is. 
So obviously, if you don't, if you're not good stewards, then yeah, we, we get the bottom end of the stick, really. Yeah. Well, yeah. So yeah, credit is definitely yeah. key, so key. So then, with like um, obviously um, having good credit, so it's just a matter of being. So let's say for example, okay, so you've paid the debts, but you still need to increase your credit score. So what are kind of like the small little things that you could possibly do to just increase Practical those ratings? <laughs> Okay, so I kind of yeah. saved this one to the end. But, oh, um, sorry. I, I, <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> it's okay. So, um, I think first thing first is to check your credit report yeah. to know what's on there. Um, nowadays, you can check that for free. Yeah. Mm. So, Experian is now free. I know they used yeah. to charge before. Um, oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah there's clear score, there's credit monitor. Um, there's different ways to check your credit report. And what you want to see is that you want to make sure that everything on there is correct, mm. is up to date, um, your correct address is on there. Um, also make sure you're on the electoral roll, that helps oh, yeah. as okay. well. Okay, yeah, because yeah, it kind of confirms you. Make sure you're on the electoral roll, guys. <laughs> Get <Yeah>. voted. <laughs> so, um, um, also making sure that um, you're not moving addresses too much as well, because mm. oh, okay. yeah, lenders kind of look at that as well. Oh, yeah. Okay. yeah. That's, that's I mean, it's yeah. just a way that they analyze. They they have a way of analyzing information, mm -hmm. and so looking mm -hmm. at the address as well. Like if you've been moving up and down, they'll be looking at why have you been moving so frequently. Mm. Maybe is it because you can't afford the rent? You know, or is it that? Oh, and I can yeah. change the scenery. Well, yeah. You know, <laughs> yeah. maybe. Yeah. 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 I, mean, yeah. 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 I mean, obviously you can move, but if they see it too frequent, they'll yeah. be wondering why yeah, is this yeah. person moving so much. Okay. So those are the few things that can help your credit, um, your credit score. Um, also, like I said, looking at what's actually on the report. You know, these days there's so many fraudulent things going on. So yeah. you want to make sure that everything that's on your credit report is clean, is is correct. Yeah. Is it was definitely you that took that credit out. You don't want it to be that someone else took that credit. Also, having a joint account does um, affect your credit score. So if you join, oh. yes. So if you if you've joined account with someone who probably had a lower rate um lower rating yeah, yeah. um they merge that together <gasps> so you want yeah. to be sure that if you're merging accounts with anybody that they're good at their end they're good at their mm. end yeah because what it would do it will impact you as well okay. and that person's name will be linked to your records as well so oh. Oh, right, 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 right. So definitely okay. when that dating process, how's the credit score? <laughs> 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 credit score. How's it? How's the credit score? How long have you been in the house? Pre, pre marriage. Pre. When it's marriage yeah. counseling, that's that's <laughs> the question she needs to be asking. Wow, wow, wow. That's yeah, man, crazy. That's, that's a lot of new information there. I, I, I would have never read this up on anything. Or, yeah, you would. No, yeah. So yeah, appreciate you. Appreciate you for answering that's that. Crazy. That was lovely, man. That was great. That was great. Okay. That's crazy. Yeah, but obviously everyone is your. Just to put it out there, your student finance does not affect your credit score. No. Cool. Mm. Yeah. Because no. so then it, on top of student finance, so like um, there was a question in terms of should I was it for, I feel sorry for like should I feel sorry for paying oh, should off you, all of should you worry about worry your, that's it that's a sorry yeah should we worry about being like <laughs> oh, repaying our student yeah. finance <laughs> once we graduate yeah yeah um you shouldn't let me say this carefully mm. so um. <laughs> Student loan debts shouldn't be your biggest worry. Mm. Let's put it like that. 100%. Um, your, <laughs> if you have a credit card or an overdraft, these are more priority than mm. a student loan. Um, the student loan company they don't deduct. Um, they don't deduct um, um, your, your, your money, yeah. yeah. They don't deduct any deductions from you. Or they don't take any deductions from you um, unless you're earning over a certain amount, depending on which type of loan you you took out mm. so if it was a type one um they'll take out if if you're earning about nineteen thousand, then that's when they will start taking that from your wages mm. through your employer they've 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 decreased it no so there's two loans oh okay so there's type one yeah type one is um that's the that was the first loan and so if you're earning approximately nineteen thousand through an employer or through paye um hmrc will deduct you know, your employer will be expected to deduct your student loan deductions oh. after that 19,000. Yeah, yeah. If you're on the type two, then you're, that's, that's, um, 
your income is about 25,000 before okay, they will start it. taking okay yeah. yeah because you know on the type 2 loan that's when um that's when um students were being charged about up to 9,000 a year mm. yeah. for for tuition fees so oh. they've cha- they've made a, a a different um a different um yeah, threshold yeah, yeah. for threshold type for 2 okay yeah oh. but um for for type 1 is 19,000 but they wouldn't take that money from you immediately you do, is yeah. once you start earning that once amount earning. yeah, yeah that the, makes sense which yeah. is why like whenever i'd start a new job for example i'd get letters as well from student finance and the hmrc yeah run me student. my check yeah yeah, saying, yeah, <laughs> yeah. How much you so right yeah now? student loan always t- they always write to you every year to let you know how much you're owing if there's mm. any interest that's been added uh if um if you've paid anything that year they will show it as a deduction so how much you pay during the year so they will always write to you and let you know I think they might stop writing by next year or so. I think it's not they... emailing, isn't it? Digital <laughs> yeah, paperless. Yeah, paperless. A lot of people are, a lot of people are going paperless. Still to me, though. Yeah, yeah a lot of people are going paperless at the moment. Mm. So you just want to make sure that you know they have the correct email mm. address for you, so that you're always up to date with that. Mm. Okay, no well, doubt. I've heard somewhere that if you pay off quickly, though, that apparently it helps, it improves your credit score, something like that. Is that true? No. Okay. Yeah, don't break it back. No. <laughs> your, your, student back. Loan, <laughs> your student loan doesn't go on your credit report. It doesn't impact your credit report whatsoever. Mm. The only thing is that some lenders may ask you if you have any loans and you might have to specify that you have a student loan. Now, they can analyse that in their own ways because banks analyse differently. So, mm. um, But your student loan is never like it doesn't impact your credit. Mm. So right. Yeah. Right. really, that's why I was saying it's one of the it's one of the loans you'd least probably least worry about, not so yeah. much as your yeah, credit card or your mm. overdraft or anything. It's kind like of really yeah, I've never really thought about it before, yeah, you know. Like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, like when you look at most people who have just freshly finished university, they'll never tell you, yeah, I've got a student finance loan. If you ask them if they're in debt, they won't tell you they're in debt. These times we are technically in debt, but well, yeah. yeah, but it's kind of like I don't know the way I see it, it's like it's already taken care of you care for you. Once you get that um, pay slip, it's already done. Mm. <laughs> kind of thing, you yeah. know, and they I take they'll deduct they want it anyway. Yeah. So I, I you know it's not it's nothing to yeah. It. yeah. Um, because you know, when you when you first signed up with student loan, you gave them some information about you, which they would have matched up to HMRC system. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So by the time you finish um, university, by the time you start working, um, HMRC know how much you're earning. Yeah. So they will write to your employer and say that, okay, from now or from this month, you, you need, need to start deducting this, yeah. this money because this person's about to hit the threshold. Mm. So yeah. it's really not... Um, I mean, there are people that say, oh, I want to pay off all my student loan. I mean, that's great and all, but you probably could do something better with that money mm. since, I mean, student loan... They're not chasing you, yeah. like, you know. I mean, they will not send bailiffs to your house like, hey, you haven't oh, paid us yeah. in a few oh, okay, years. Okay, that's good, that's good. They yeah. won't do that, so yeah, really. Yeah, of course. <laughs> 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 wow. No, no, but but really. I, I'm, what I'm worried is that the deductions aren't that large. Um, I, I think depending on how much you're getting paid, yeah, it's, it's the deductions. It's, it's, it's not that large. It's not really. that grave no, anyways. So, so um, Okay, yeah. no, that's a good look, yeah. And obviously, if you're a uni student out there or you're considering obviously going a uni route, obviously make sure you're paying close attention to what obviously Mazit has just been saying. Yeah. So and yeah, no, it takes look. a while. I think it also takes a while. Like uh, there's a certain amount of years where they just stop taking it. I don't know how many years um, do they. Oh, I don't know. If how. I'm correct, yeah. because I've heard so many different things, but from what I know, um, the for the first the type one loan, um, I think after twenty five years or so. Mm-hmm. And for the type two is about thirty years, okay. something like that. But I'm sure there's, I mean, there's, there's more terms and conditions applied to that, to yeah. that as well. So everyone yeah, could, definitely. you know, check that out and yeah. just be sure. I see. Mm, okay, yeah. Okay. So. okay. No worries regarding that. Definitely no worries yeah. at all, man. It's all yeah, good, it's all good, it's all good. Nice, nice. Okay, cool. So, yeah, let's move on to the next question. Um, so, just going back to the basics of, obviously, money. Um, as soon as I earn money, I realise that I have uh, an expenditure problem. So, obviously, I need to start budgeting, but I don't know where to start. So, how do I start budgeting? Great question. Um, so... You know, most of us are on our phones and mm. our devices, smart devices these days. There are actually apps that you can use to okay. budget. Um, there's loads of apps and they're free as well. I mean, some of them might have like um, a premium version that you might pay something for, but there are free apps out there, definitely. Um, 
some people prefer the spreadsheet method which is which is good as well in fact it's probably more precise because you can actually detail out your expenses in, uh, in full detail mm. you you can classify each expense and so um i mean for budgeting i would say either the budgeting apps or spreadsheet um i know these days you see a lot of um spreadsheets that are being sold um, maybe via Instagram or mm. Twitter or social mm. media, we see we see people saying, "Oh, I've created a spreadsheet for <laughs> yeah. two pounds." Mm. Um, pleased to tell you, <laughs> <laughs> just on I'm pleased it. to tell you, there is a free budgeting planner and spreadsheet on um, the Money Saving Expert website. So you don't need to pay cool, for cool. a spreadsheet. Oh, you can that in the link. I'm going to put that down there in the description box. You don't need that. We can't don't worry about it. In case you ain't caught cool, don't watch that. The gems are down below. We're going to write that down for you lot. We got yes, you. that's free. And it actually details out your expenses. It even tells you how to go through your expenses so that you can, mm. you know, budget. You can put all the expenses on the, on mm. the, on the list. It's like how my journal in the bin then. <laughs> I mean, since you've not been opening it, oh, really? like, I've probably decorated. I've got like colors. I've even put a leaf at the front to make it nice, so I'll actually turn it. It's terrible. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's a very, it's a very helpful. It actually talks you through it. It, was, it tells you what to be looking out for, okay. and then it, um, at the bottom you can download the spreadsheet, and then you know it's already giving you so many, so many different advice to prepare in your mm. spreadsheet so mm. definitely and it's free as well i mean you can't go wrong yeah, you so. can't go wrong with mm. a little freebie can't you so, yeah okay okay yeah no, that's proper that's so, true. yeah i just have something in mind like it just pops up might be a bit like, a bit you know but um what does financial freedom mean to you what does it look like to you um financial freedom is for me is um maybe paying off your bills and you don't feel it. <sighs> yeah, that's a lot. You don't feel it. You don't feel it because <laughs> you know the money's leaving the account but you're fine, you're you're happy, you know, mm. you're mm. you're financially you're doing well. So you don't look at the bills coming out. You're not crying when you see that one bill coming out of your mm. account, you know, or even the multiple bills that are coming out of your account. Mm. So and you're not crying at the end of the month <laughs> before payday you know yeah. before that payday oh, sometimes yeah. you're like mm. <laughs> so yeah. i think financial freedom to me is when you're not experiencing those yeah that yes phase. yeah yeah i hear that <laughs> I heard that, yeah. yeah we'll no. Aspire to get to that point. Yeah, for real, for real. <laughs> that's, the, that's definitely what I feel like financial freedom would be as well. Like just the like the ability to just choose when and where and what to do with your money and, mm -hmm. and you creating also those elements of how also you're gonna get those that mm -hmm. money in. You know what I'm saying? Obviously that multiple streams of income, whatever. Because obviously fair enough, obviously you could be on a paycheck, on a high paycheck, whatever, even a hundred thousand pounds a year, but ultimately at the same time it's like you're gonna get a lot more tax mm -hmm. up with that 100k anyways and mm -hmm. there's still going to be a lot of bills mm -hmm. so how's that going to how's that financial freedom necessarily you know what i'm saying so for me multiple streams of income just having that um freedom of thought that peace of mind especially so yeah so in terms of saying okay so in regards to like financial no sorry um multiple streams of income like do you have any like suggestions or advice on how to like how one can go about creating um a uh, what do you call it, uh, a multiple or another stream of income? Um, so actually, I, I noted down two things about increasing your income. Mm. There's many different ways. Um, I think at the moment, I know because so many people have gone through so many things because of the coronavirus, the lockdown, the pandemic, you know. Pandemic. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, there are... I, I know of people that are going for second jobs at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, I know, I don't want to sound insensitive because I know that many people have lost jobs, many people have been made redundant and or put on furlough. Um, there are quite a number of jobs out there at the moment. So I know people think that because there's been so many redundancies and furloughs and all mm. these things mm. that's going on. People think that, oh, there's no jobs out there. And because businesses are closing down, so there's a loss of jobs. Um, but actually, there are still quite a few jobs out there. Mm. And so um, I would 
I mean, it's, it's something that's been helping people at the moment, getting a second job. So something that you can do in your spare time. So if you're, I mean, if you're, if you're, if you are working and maybe your income has been reduced, uh, maybe you want to top up that income, going for a second job would be, um, you know, it would, pro it would probably help you. Um, those who have lost jobs or they're not employed at the moment, um, definitely look for a job. Um, you might not get a job in the, your desired field at the moment. That's one of the advice that's been go um, going around at the moment. You may not get the desired dream job, yeah. you know, the desired field that you were trained to. And I know some people's standards is like, oh, I'm not, I'm not going to work any less than where I am. But really right now it's just about trying to survive yeah, yeah. trying to get your finances Definitely. up so yeah. really there i i think there are quite a number of jobs i i've been looking as well just for research purposes and there's quite a number of jobs out there i know most places are closed um but if you look around there's still places that's open there's mm. supermarkets mm. they are in high demand right now right. they sure. need Facts. they need Facts. stuff i know someone would say oh, oh i wouldn't work in a supermarket but Swallow it's money. Bread. Yeah, it's swallow money. it. <laughs> you just need that money. You just need something to survive. I mm. mean, working in somewhere that you wouldn't want to work is better than, you know, struggling to pay your bills monthly. Mm. Mm. You know, so definitely, um, I would. My advice is to look for um, look for jobs that are not even in your desired field. Something that you can do maybe for a few hours a week. Mm. you know or something maybe even a night job or something like that yeah. that would help awesome, yeah mm. um that would help you as well um side hustle start a business provide services look at what people need yeah at this time yeah um you know so many places are closed um you know people are not able to go out like are there services you can provide mm -hmm. that will help people at this time um, can you give courses online? Do you mm. do you have a skill mm. that you can teach people? Mm. You know, um, you can even sell it. You can even, I mean, I've seen a lot of, um, I mean, the beauty industry has been hit a lot, but I've seen them, I've seen business owners just coming out with so it's many creative ideas. Ways. I mean, yeah. nail shops now, they're selling like um, stick-on stick nails. Stick-ons, yeah. Yeah, and that's become really popular yeah. now. Um, they never used to be popular, wow, wow, yeah. you know, but now it's, everyone is, everyone wants stick-on nails. It's because like get a ratchet, but now it's like... <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, yeah. You know, nobody wants to go out with their nails not done. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, um, makeup artists they've been doing courses online mm -hmm. you know they've been making good money from that as well so look at something that you could sell look at something you can do a service you can provide or even selling um goods maybe mm -hmm. you can you know maybe there's some goods you can sell just do something that will make you extra money mm -hmm. and i think these things will help you to um increase your streams of income you know mm -hmm. so um apart from i know investments as well of course you need to do your research with that but also use your hands you know god gave us talents exactly you know he didn't he Tap didn't you, you didn't come yeah. here with no talents you know exactly. god gave you a talent exactly. so definitely look at things that you're good at look yeah. at things that you're interested in yeah. you know um birthdays people people are still celebrating their birthdays mm. i know it's a lockdown mm. we can't go out to parties but people are still they still want to decorate their house mm. they still want to have a birthday cake mm. yeah, you know exactly. these are services yeah, that people are true. looking for at the moment that's so true. um people are doing parties on zoom they need a host <laughs> you know some, <laughs> yeah, yeah it's true no, facts, facts, you know facts. it's true some mcs some master of ceremonies now they're actually hosting virtual parties yeah. so if somebody's having like a birthday party and they can't meet up with everybody they will pay um, an MC to come on there and oh, host, that's yeah, crazy. and keep everybody interested yeah. and engaged, you know. So, wow, 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 wow. yeah, that's, that's yeah, that's, and that's even cool. you know, DJing, you know, uh, mm. <laughs> yeah. okay. there was a lot of people DJing as well, especially during like Corona, doing yeah, IG lives as you know, well. doing IG yeah, lives yeah, yeah. and stuff like that. Um, there's so many things, you know, you can even do a worship night or something yeah. like that. You know, um, there's been conferences that should have been in person. Personally, now they're doing them 
online. Mm. They're still charging. The, um, they're still charging some sort of fee. Oh. So they do make money as well. So there's so many things. You know, I know it's a very hard time, but if we really put our minds to it, we can really find something that we yeah. can yeah. do. Into that, yeah, with the yeah. way the world is changing so rapidly. Yeah. Obviously, it's hard to keep up, but there's always a way for us to. There's be able always to keep a up. way. Yeah, I, what you said is just right because, like I was saying before, there, there's actually I've. I'm seeing a lot more of jobs now than before, before. the lockdown mm. because although um, of course businesses are closing down, of course people are losing their jobs, but then there's some businesses and there's some some companies that need more. They have more demands now. Um, they're trying to create more opportunities to fit this time now. You know, mm. working from home. You know, there's um, call centers. Mm. You know, they can't come into the the center yeah, physically. That's true. But yeah. they need people to answer the phone, so yeah. they still need people. Some businesses, they need people to manage their secretarial things, mm -hmm. while other staff are maybe furloughed or not, you mm -hmm. know, maybe made mm -hmm. redundant. They need that little bit of admin help as well. Yeah. So yeah. these are areas, I know some people will say, oh, well, I'm not an admin. Not that, yeah. But yeah. it's money, yeah, and they're true. paying quite well but, as mm -hmm. well. So really, mm -hmm. um, if anyone is looking for a way to make extra income or even to just find a job, look at other fields. Honestly, yeah. you will find something definitely, mm. even if it's something small. But you know, small will help you pay your bills. Definitely. Small will help you definitely. get through. Like, don't just sit at home and say, "Oh well, um, I, I haven't got a job, so that's yeah. it." Don't don't that's do that. True. I definitely feel like right now, yeah, due to Corona, a lot of people are maybe not applying for other jobs out of like a an, a space of pride as well because yes. they're thinking, do you know what, my other job was serving me great. Why must mm -hmm. I apply for another job? Mm -hmm. Okay, like. Fair enough, I've got a bicycle. I could maybe do delivery. Like, I could do delivery jobs. But guess what? I don't like their uniform. Oh, it's cold. <laughs> so people love making excuses out of pride. But realistically, like like you said, if you put our minds to it, there's so much things that we could be doing. And all of these businesses are adapting. Exactly. And fair enough, on social media, the main... Um, Obviously, uh, conversation could be raw. Like uh, all of these like businesses are cl are shutting down. There's a thousand people all applying for one role. But at the end of the day, like that's gonna be life. Do you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? So mm -hmm. you so still many, need to do your bit. Do you there's know what I'm so many roles out yeah. there, and I love what you said about you know your family, where you've come from, because mm. when we look at our parents or even our parents' parents, they worked in jobs that we probably wouldn't even you work in. You know, yeah. we've had the cleaners. Yeah, we've had true. those working in. Um, um, you know, small roles such as like maybe a restaurant even, you know, mm. um, we can do that too. You know, I know they've built for us so that we wouldn't have, have to, to do that, but for, you have yeah. to start from somewhere, you yeah. know, don't just say, oh, because oh, oh, I work in the city, I'm working 60,000, I, I, I've earned 60,000, I can't, I can't now go and start working in, exactly. um, yeah. you know, Primark or it's something. Not, it's, it's, like, it's like a child learning how to walk. Just because that child fell down 60 times, yeah, it's not like the child's going to tell himself or herself, this walking thing's not for me. That child's exactly. going to learn how to walk. It's, it's going to go from being a baby yeah. to a toddler, toddler to a kid to mm -hmm. an adult, do you get what I'm saying? So, yeah, and yeah. That's, that's the childlike faith that God wants us to have. That's right. You know, having faith like a child. As small as a mustard seed as well, yeah. yeah. You know, that's the faith that we need. And... And there are, like I said, there's so many jobs at the moment. Mm. There's even virtual career fairs going on. Wow. I saw one going on last week on Twitter. You know, they were yeah. from about, I don't know if you saw it, but it was from like 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. And they were just mm. posting out different jobs between these hours. And I was shocked. I went through the thread and I thought, wow, yeah. there's really jobs out there. Yeah. Most of them were work from home. Mm. So really, you don't need to leave your house. You're still complying with you know, yeah. social social distancing and whatnot. But at the end of the day, there are jobs out there. There yeah. are opportunities out there. And if we sit down and say that, oh, there's nothing out there because I don't have what I'm, I'm used to, yeah. then we are going to be shortchanging yeah, ourselves. Yeah, definitely doing us off, definitely. Uh, def a big, big disservice. Dis disservice. Yeah. Yeah. Two-part-ish. Um, if you so you have a main job, uh, you also want to get another job just to get some money in. How does that impact um, in terms of like taxes and mm. money coming in? And then the other one is you have your main job, but you also have a side hustle like a business. Does that make you accountable for paying your own taxes and whatnot? Yeah. So if you're if you have a job already and you're getting a second job, what you will notice by the time you get that second job, you will be placed on an emergency tax code, mm -hmm. and so that will be taxed you at the straight highest yeah not <laughs> not not the high highest yes, but I've, uh, yeah it depending on your overall income um they will determine so it could be the 20 percent, it could be 40 percent 
um, but that will be coming out. So if you are getting a second job, you also want to look at whether the tax that's being deducted from that second mm -hmm. income, is it going to be still worth it in the long, in run? The long run? So that's, yeah. I mean, that's a good point that you just mentioned yeah. as well. Um, if you have a side hustle, um, if you are not earning more than a thousand a year, then you wouldn't need to do anything. But once you start earning a thousand or more in one year, then you would be expected to do um, your be, own tax. Yeah, your own taxes. Yes, yeah, uh, yeah. Annoying. So, but <laughs> like I said, these are the ways that people start out. Mm. You know, this is what helps people. I know people think of tax and they're like, mm. Mm. but it's really not that bad. I mean, we stuff look we up. We should have learned in school, but we're not learning. About we don't it. learn these things in school. Mm. Um, we don't learn these things in school. Um, Why do you think, think that is, by the way? Huh? Why do you think that is? Why do you think we don't learn it? I school? think I think um, schools just don't have the resources to do that. Mm. That's all. I've pers my personal um, observation of schooling um, over the years is that I think the education system has deteriorated a little okay. bit. It's improved in some some areas, but I feel like some things are not taught mm. anymore. The things that used to be taught before are not taught anymore. And I'll give an example. Um, you know, there's there's some, I think when, maybe when I was in, in um, school, there were things that I, would t I was taught, like um, using Excel, mm. you know, Excel yeah, spreadsheet. We were taught that as well. We yeah, were taught yeah. that, but some yeah. people don't get that opportunity anymore because yeah. ICT has been scrapped from some schools. Mm. Yeah, that's true, yeah. Yeah, so they might not have that privilege. So there's yeah. things that, that um, kids now might not learn. Mm -hmm. And so I realised that, you know, the education system at the moment is, is I know they're trying to cut costs as well. Mm -hmm. So because of that, there's not enough resources to teach kids these things. And so um, we as the older generation or even parents, it's good to start teaching your kids about money management mm. from early. There are kids that, um, I mean, imagine sending your child to the shop with £10 and they spent £7 and the cashier is meant to give them their change, but some kids don't even realise that they wow. need to change, get yeah. that change. They don't well, even know well, that well. they're getting change back. All they know is that I'm giving you money I'm getting my item and I'm going mm. home. Mm. So they don't realise that there's actually change. Yeah, definitely. So yeah. it's to definitely important to teach money management. From yeah, money. that's true. Personally, to play, to play, I'm going to say oppose an advocate. That's the best way to... No, yeah, oppose <laughs> an advocate. <laughs> I think that, um, I think like you said with parents, like I think we we have this expectancy on schools, like this heavy pressure on schools because yeah. kids are at school for like 8% of the time. So you expect them to learn absolutely everything. But I feel like um, it's necessary that those things are um, taught or imitated at least or illustrated in the home environment or yeah. whatever community young people or whoever you're attached to, whether that's a church community or a culture community, if you're part of the Irish Travellers community, community, whatever community yeah. you're attached to or home you're, you're attached to should be yeah. able to provide that space for you to learn. Because... Uh, yeah, the education system has definitely deteriorated, kind of, and whatnot. And like, even just recently, they've enforced PSHE to be mandatory by September mm. to be taught. Before it wasn't, but it's like again, because um, they're so like everyone saturated with so of much course. stuff to add finance. So I think it's definitely important that um, as older, older lots, um, older young adults and whatnot, um, and parents um, and communities to make it our mission to um, provide that space or cultivate a space for young people to like learn these things or yeah, just to like imitate course. certain behaviours like oh, like saving behaviours kind of thing like my when I went to uni I didn't realise this is a habit I picked up from my mum like I made this clay um, like money dish because my mum always has a bottle of just money just Put, she's put it away so it's just like spare change but that does the same thing as well but you just put money in it so when I went to uni I didn't realise every spare change that I had I just left it on the table in my little dish so then when I didn't have any money in me I was like oh I have my little you know mm -hmm. like dish of money so yeah. I think it's important that we cultivate spaces for like you know to kind of yeah. absorb kids, from us kids definitely pick up things from parents as well yeah. I mean once you see your parent doing something like you said kids easily just imitate that. Mm. So it's definitely good to instill that kind of um, culture in kids from early so that once they're teenagers, they're doing that, they're maintaining their money, they know about money management, you know. I mean, it's really not difficult. I know um, people make money management to seem like 
a big huge task but there's so many resources out there and they're free mm. you don't need to pay for some of this these things it. so yeah. money makes the world go around for real but yeah i literally um feel like schools definitely have a big part to play when it comes to educating the youth on what really matters as you me- as you said yeah you said, no 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 but listen yeah. hear me out yeah. though as you said when we're in school most of the time, 80% mm. of the time, roughly, okay, cool. And then 20% we're at home. So I'm saying, so technically, they should be ed- educating more. Obviously, me being in the school, like, in the education system, I realised that, as for me, working in a primary school is fun, and it's also fun for the kids too. They always say that they, they enjoy primary school, even up until, like, life as an yeah, adult. Was your always, best they always say primary school is the best years. So why is that same energy not maintained through, se- through secondary, through college? It's because they, they've done me down again in secondary school. And I feel like it just it basically plays its part in the, in the capitalistic sort of obviously structure. Mm-hmm. Rich will get richer, poor will get poorer, and it, and it's so sad because not every student as well is also meant to go the academic route. Like yeah. they like to um, shut okay, so sort no, of the yeah. vocational subjects, and you know, like that's that's yeah. what's wrong with it. I think it would just be I think it's necessary that there will be more um, organisations um, that offers trade because I know yeah. back in the day there was a lot of trade opportunities. A lot of young men want to go into more plumbing routes, mm. entrepreneurial routes, kind of thing, and they just kind of just learn along the way so i think definitely on a like my secondary school we used to do this thing called like three e's where mm. like you get to choose what you wanted to do whether it was like drama whether it was like making money like you had the voluntary option to pick what you wanted to do so it wasn't part of the school exactly. civic syllabus but it was two hours every wednesday on the afternoon that you get to do whatever you want to do so i think necessary that if there were more organizations and like you know just you know, movements that allow young people to yeah, kind definitely. of learn yep. in that yeah, uh, system. There's a lot of changes that need to be made. The national curriculum needs to be changed as well, I think, personally. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so we, change it! Change that, change it ain't that. Ain't working! Yeah, I'm not going to learn about King Henry the Eighth and his daddy. <laughs> yeah, I don't need that information right but now. But you in this England, you finna learn, no, no, you no, know? No, no, no. You in this England. I'll pass, <laughs> no, I'll joking. pass, I'll pass. But yeah, like, yeah, finance is, needs to, to happen. The finance yeah. needs to be... a uh, an integral part of obviously the education system and yes I realise that special need kids for example yeah, in no, their that's schools true, yeah. they get taken to the shop and they get asked to um to like calculate their change but those I'm, are um those are basic life skills that they need to um to develop anyways mm. because well, actually no they're not no yeah no forget it because they're still very able kids anyways mm, but it's just mm. that so that they are aware of someone's taking advantage of me kind of thing so I get that why yeah, that is exactly. necessary yeah no, definitely yeah Oh yeah, but I hear that with the school. I don't know. It's a bit thing with the schools, Mm. but I hear that though. But even like even like during I think sixth form for example or like college, maybe that's when it can be definitely implemented because you're kind of easing into do I go the regular university route where you probably find how to deal with your money, or if you go the trade route, which is like you know. The polar opposite. I disagree. It needs to be taught from as soon as you step foot into an education <laughs> yeah, system. Yeah, as soon as, soon as look you... Look at the Jewish communities. From the age of seven, they, they teach their boys and daughters how to be men. Mm. When it comes to finance mm. especially. And I realise that every other community, we're not really doing that too much. And I realise that, you see, with schools, yeah, schools that are in wealthy backgrounds and areas, they're getting taught all of these things. I don't think they're getting taught at all. I think it's think mainly so. just off, like I said, they're they're imitating and they're in a space where they know and feel comfortable with money. How do and then it's like every move that their family or member, whoever mm. makes, it's just based off smart decisions of money. So it's like I guess it's a class thing more or less. Like because of the class that you're in, I guess you are better off um accessing those kind of resources. I don't know, you can disagree with me in that sense, you know. Um, I guess, I guess, I guess. But, um, yeah, I do what, get what you mean in terms of, yeah, schools do need to, but, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> exactly. I think it starts from home. But, That's, yeah. of course, schools, yeah, I'm, I'm sure, I mean, schools probably used to teach these things, but because, you know, not enough resources, so it, it's just probably not physically possible for them to do that. So it's very important for things to be taught from home mm. um, as early as possible, yeah. Yeah, definitely. definitely. Yeah. Yeah. It takes a village to raise a child. It's from home. It's from home. <laughs> so yeah. do you have any, like, other, like, tips that you can give us? Like, okay. some, someone like me, because I'm <laughs> terrible. Okay, so I just wanted to quickly, because I know, obviously, mm. this year it's been crazy. Crazy. Yeah. Crazy, crazy. You know, um, there's more people in debt now than before. Mm-hmm. So I just wanted to talk about how to manage debt, mm. if okay. you have any debt. Um, 
one tendency for people who are in debt is um, they tend to not um, pay attention to that debt. They tend to ignore <laughs> it. Like, oh, you mm. will stay. Will come. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They tend to ignore it. I think because um, it can be overwhelming to look at. Um, it can be depressing as well to look at. But um, the worst thing you can do if you're in debt is to ignore. Mm. Do not ignore the debt. If 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 anyone is writing to you to say that you owe money, whether you know you owe the money or you don't know, the worst thing you can do is ignore mm. because what that looks like is ignorance. It looks like you don't want to comply. It looks like you don't you don't you have no intention to um, you know pay off whatever you you may be owing. Mm. And so the worst thing to do is ignore. So do not ignore. That's my key advice for if you have any debt. Even if you're not sure how the debt has been, you know, how how it was incurred, um, definitely find out. I know there's some people that say, oh, I don't know how I got this debt. Just find out. I mean, you need to know. So far, your name is on it. You need yeah. to know where that debt is coming from. Um, and also try to make arrangements to pay it. Even if you can't pay it off straight away, make um, an arrangement with the company or whoever and ask them look I can't pay you everything right now but is there any way I can set up um, installment payments mm. I can pay you monthly I'm able to pay this yeah per month can yeah. I do that that shows them that you are trying you know yeah. it's much yeah. better than ignoring yeah. I know so many people will just ignore it they'll yeah. see a red letter and they'll, yeah. they'll stop writing they won't stop writing they what they'll do mm. they'll pass it on to debt collectors wow. yeah. that you don't want it to get to that point mm. because once it gets to that point Indeed. it becomes harder for it to be managed mm. so yeah. and they're yeah. actually nicer when you tell them that this is what's going on they're actually nicer. <laughs> they are quite nice you yeah. know? i mean i mean when you tell a company that look especially this year they know that people have gone yeah, through so course. many things mm. yeah. so really um so many companies have put in place um, various options to help people that have been affected by mm. this pandemic and the lockdown and the different effects that have come from it. So this is really a good time to try and, you know, speak to whoever you're owing, any companies that have told you that, look, you owe this money and you've not paid it off. This is the best time to speak to them and to see what you can do mm. because they are all very understanding, especially with what's been going on this year. Yeah. Um, Okay, okay, so okay. if you have defaulted, um, again, there is some advice that you can still call the company and see if you can try and arrange for that to be cleared, mm. um, the payments to be cleared. And even once you finish paying, you can even ask them and see if they'll be willing to remove that default from your credit report. Mm. Um, some will be willing, some maybe not, but at least that you've paid it off, you know yeah. that by the time you try to build up on your credit, you know that you've paid this debt off anyway so uh, things will definitely get better yeah, yeah. Oh, I, i've got a personal story about that you know? <laughs> the, imagine like somebody took out um a, a loan of, of, of about two thousand pounds in my name but it's like i wasn't monitoring the payments that was coming out of my account mm -hmm. so then the so then they thought the loan company thought that yeah like i actually took it out because obviously they were baffled as to why obviously i was i was letting it run through mm -hmm. but then I, I told them listen like i haven't really been monitoring my my, my bank balance like that so honestly uh, honest to God, it was not me. So I had to send them the evidence to show that it's not me. And then I actually showed them proof of when I found out who it was that it's actually them. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and then I left it in somebody else's hands to actually deal with it with, with like a lawyer or sort of stuff yeah. like that. Yeah, literally. And then they, they ended up writing to me like three months later to say, okay, cool, we're going to have to obviously um, write off your, your balance. Right. But I guess that the loan company really want, they didn't want to do that because ultimately for them, they're saying it as, right, it's business. I, I, I handed out the, the money to you and we're never going to make no interest off you because, you know, it's not mm -hmm. yours to pay anyway. So yeah. yeah, I mean, there's a lot of fraudulent things going on, especially during this period of coronavirus. Um, mm. You know, people have been encouraged to claim benefits or to take out all sorts of loans or yeah. any kind of help that's available and because um, the guidance in the UK was to stay at home mm. so most of these platforms have brought on these services online mm -hmm. and so you're now meant to apply online but then are you applying on the correct website are you using the correct mm. you know are you put your information in the correct places mm. you know anyone can get hold of information if you're not using the correct website so that's one thing to definitely be careful of and which is why i said that you should always check your credit report and know what is there and be sure that every um everything that's on your credit report you know what that is 
you know, because anyone can just say, oh, yeah, I am Sema or I'm Danielle. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, you know, anyone can just say that. Mm. Um, you know, there's places where you can apply for things online. If they have your information, they can easily use that, exactly. mm. you know, and then that's it. And it's on your credit report, it, yeah. you know, so it's definitely important to know what's on your credit report. Yeah, so, yeah I've got to be cautious and yeah. make sure that if, if I was to, like, um, take money out and borrow money, you have to make sure that I know that I could pay it back in the long run. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah definitely. Um, there's a few saving tips as well, I know. That's a hot topic at the moment. <laughs> yeah. Y'all want to know, see. That's a know, save. Know. Um, I know people do invest in, like, um, financial advisor and, you know, getting some personal advice yeah. and stuff. That's good. And it shows, of, of course, I mean, it shows that you're, you're willing to make that change. But the change really starts with you. Mm. Come on. And so... What, 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 what? The change really starts with you. So no matter what any personal advisor or financial advisor tells you if you're not yeah. doing it yeah you're gonna find yourself in yeah. a hot mm. mess so um i would say i think i think my first point was reduce your outgoings mm -hmm. look at what's going out of your account so mm -hmm. from your previous payday um look at how much you spent and look at where that money is actually Spending. gone to yeah. um that's a big key in trying to budget trying to save because then you will know by looking at your outgoings you'll know what's in essential and what's not so essential mm. so um definitely reduce your outgoings by looking at where first of all looking at where your money is going to how you're spending your money look at where you can cut costs mm. um you know there's there's so many ways we can cut costs um this week is black friday next week is cyber monday I'm I love Danielle's Dale. face. Really? Because <laughs> you will find me there. I, mean, I was like, I was supposed to buy some stuff and pay. I was like, oh no, Black Friday. Okay, I'll give myself a commission. <laughs> I yeah. mean, but the, uh, the these separate. are all, they're all good deals. Yeah. But it's a matter of, do you need it? Mm. So it's about looking at your wants versus your needs. Mm -hmm. Do you need it? Yes, do I do. You? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So kind of do, do you really do you really need that yeah. dress or Challenge. those true, that yeah. outfit? The new iPhone. The new outfit. That shoe, that five. That <laughs> that wig. That wig. <laughs> you realize it's protected there. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, there's so <laughs> many souls going on. I mean, because of because of the pandemic, because of the lockdown, because businesses have been suffering. Um, some of them started their, their sales quite early, mm. oh, yeah, that's earlier true. than usual. Yeah. So they've been sending you those emails like, hey, <gasps> get 30% yeah, yeah, yeah. off. They want our money, yeah. they want our moon, our chance. I know, you know, Fashion Nova, because they got 19 million, they did some crazy 40%. I was like, oh, child. They got 9 million what followers. Yeah. So they're like, yes, they're and really they get you to buy all these things. Mm. Um, are you using it? Are you using it? Mm. Are you wearing it? I mean, if you're buying a dress, where are you where going? Are you going? Where are you going? Where are you going? Where are you going? Where are you going? I saw somebody saying um, today that um, if your phone works, do you need a new one? Oh, I mean, <laughs> no, mechanicals. You got a Wi Fi. It, it takes calls. Yeah. You can see your Instagram. Exactly. You can see your messages. It's Why are you buying a new right. phone? Yeah. You know, I but I know sometimes we can't help it, but we have to try. <laughs> what do you say? I call it spiritual bondage with Apple. <laughs> Apple. I'm telling you, it's we are bondage. all in spiritual bondage. bondage. I know. Apple. <laughs> so much issues with Apple, but we still, we still keep on investing in them. It's true. Them, but it's so many issues, yeah. wow, but we're, wow. we, we're here yeah. with Apple. Mm. <laughs> so, um, yeah, look at your unnecessary purchases. Mm. Um, do you need to buy food when you go out? If you're going to work, do you need to buy food? Can you... Bring yeah, that's the problem home. I have. Yeah. I love snacking like randomly. I yeah. just buy like these little chocolate bars, but that adds up in it. Yeah, yeah. It, adds up, yeah. yeah. it adds up nowadays. Chocolate bars are like, oh, my little Freddie used to be like seven p or something like that. Mm. <laughs> I'm now just now like 25p. <laughs> it's inflation, it's crazy. <laughs> you see, so do you need that snack? Yeah, you know, these are the things that we have to look at and and. Um, it's good that we spoke about budgeting earlier because mm. when you when you use the budgeting planner or a spreadsheet or an app, you can look at where your expenses Where's are going, going to. Yeah. Um, some of the apps that um, are like budgeting apps, what they do is they 
because they kind of know where the retailers are or whoever or, or the company yeah. yeah so they kind of compress it into one for you and it shows you that hey you spent your money here here mm. and here and um you look at it and you're like, like wrong. cringe wrong. Yeah. <laughs> cringe yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so um the apps help the, the spreadsheet definitely helps with budgeting and that will help you to know where your expenses are going to and that will also help you to cut back on unnecessary spending is so key to cut back on if you want to save cut back on the unnecessary spending you know um i'll tell you one now um food shopping where do you shop mm. like you know the food the shop that you buy your food in um mm. are you buying branded food do you need branded food i mean there's that well-known um cereal um, the brand mm. that begins with K. Okay. Mm. <laughs> mm. Free, uh, you know, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, I mean, their cereals retail for about three pounds or four yeah. pounds, if anything. Okay, Probably let's more. say three pounds on average. Yeah. You can get a cheaper alternative from. Mm. Still, I mean, non-branded. Yeah, 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 you can yeah. get you know, supermarket versions. Yeah, yeah, you know, they retail for about a pound, even maybe less. even less. Mm. Yeah. Um, mm. The most you'll probably spend on a non-branded cereal is about one pound fifty to one pound seventy. Yeah. You mm. never spend more than two pounds on un- yeah. unbranded cereal, you know, and they taste the same. They taste the same, yeah. They taste the yeah. same. One gem I took, sorry, from one from uni is that um, when you're doing your food shopping, depending on where. So let's say, for example, you you're better off doing your frozen shopping at. Iceland, for example, mm-hmm. or like your fresh stuff could be from Aldi, or like your fruits, yeah. or like maybe um, I don't know your snacks and juice can come from a different shop because they yeah. all have like I feel like with Aldi or Lidl, they're they're cheaper with their produce rather than Tesco's, and the mm-hmm. Iceland, their frozen yeah. stuff is cheaper than yeah. Aldi, so yeah. be very it's conscientious true. of where yeah, you're doing. Yeah, so definitely yeah. that's a good shout because. There's, I mean, people say, oh, well, I don't like shopping at Audi or Lidl or mm. so these funny shops. But look, they are. These lot, like, do they have Rachel's money to be talking about? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, um, I've been to Audi and, you know, the amount of bags mm-hmm. I walk out with mm-hmm. by just spending a fraction of what yeah. I spend at Tesco. Yeah. You know, sometimes you can spend so much at Tesco and you only leave with like one bag. Can you imagine? Like, mm. like, yeah. Wow. That's crazy. You know, so these are ways you can cut back, you know, yeah. seriously. Definitely. And nowadays they show you, um, they show you, I think the adverts, they tell you that, oh, they do the comparisons. They do the comparisons. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they do the comparisons. It's they show you that, yeah. oh, if you buy these items at Tesco, you spend the about cheek, 40 pounds. But if you buy it at maybe Aldi or Lidl, yeah. you'll spend mm. about 25 yeah. pounds, yeah. which is, yeah, that's bro. big that's money. Bro, that's a big bro, saving, bro. Yeah. you know. So definitely look at where you can cut back your purchases. Look at, you know, do you have to shop that branded shop? Even branded clothing, mm. do you need, do it? need it? You know, uh, this year. What, 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 what? <laughs> <laughs> this year, we're yeah. going to go out anywhere. Exactly. That um, Prada jacket has been gathering oh. dust. <laughs> It has been gathering. <laughs> gathering. It's, it's true. been gathering dust. Yes. Yeah, Nobody saw it. You can't wear it on Zoom. Because... I mean. <laughs> Unless... you know and that was a conversation I was even having with Daniel, I think, off camera. We love to support these brands that don't really support us either. Like, they do a lot of things that belittle our community. Yeah. And you know what? We're just paying really for the name because if you, if you deep it, all of these clothes are, made, are being made in the same factories in, in Asia and then. You're just stamping an extra. How do you do it? Couple of letters. You're stamping on the on the on the on the thing on the clothes and an mm-hmm. extra set of letters. They just they you know just then, stamp their label yeah. and bam. It's more um, ethical, you know. Yeah, man. It's so not cool. just look presentable. Do you need it? Just look presentable, yeah. like you said. You know. Um, I mean, the shops will open again in a few weeks. We're going to see loads of sales because mm. some of them want to get rid, rid of, of their, their stuff, stock. Yeah. Um, Christmas sales are coming again. Um, but then ask yourself, do you really need those things? I mean, um, the same person that said the iPhone thing, they said, um, if you have clothes on now, do you need more clothes? <laughs> you know, it's so funny, but it's, it's so true. true. Do you need it? It's you true. know, most of us have been repeat, repeating yeah. the same outfits during the lockdown anyway. I mean, who's judging you? Yeah. No one's looking at you. Yeah. You go to the supermarket. No one cares what you're wearing exactly. because everyone is just going through something yeah. in their mind, you know. No one really cares if you're wearing Gucci trainers or uh, sport, um, is it shoe zone exactly. <laughs> trainers? No one no somebody one that's living on a complete opposite side of the world who has no access to TV or internet, they don't know that. They yeah. don't really care about no that. No one so, knows you know, and no one cares. To, to be living you know, yeah. everyone's been looking at, oh, 
can I get enough food shopping for the house? Exactly. You know, no one's looking at, no one's even looking at your hair. You exactly. know, no one's looking, no one cares. So these are the things that we've placed so much importance on but i think 2020 has really opened our eyes most definitely yeah like, we should so, not panic buy let's not over buy either. yeah so black friday if you don't need it don't do it don't do it please guys. don't do it's it it's a trap black friday is <laughs> every year and then plus what january sells all, all months anyway yeah exactly so <laughs> i mean if you if you really need things i mean um i advise you to compare with websites and look at you know, yeah. can maybe, you get yeah. a cheaper maybe, elsewhere? Maybe vintage and, and thrift stores. Depop, yes. thrifting, Depop charity yes. shops. Yeah, these I things as them. well. If you're paying household bills, look at using um, online comparison tools. Are you paying too much energy? Yeah. Um, yeah. Sometimes we're used to paying um, our particular brand mm. who yeah. supplies us our energy or our light or whatever. And actually, you can get it cheaper, cheaper as well and mm. better. Yes. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. so it's definitely it's definitely a, a um, advice to use online comparison tools. If you have insurance, whether mm. it's car insurance or whatever insurance you have, call them to see if they'll reduce it. I know this yeah. year a lot of them, a lot of people complained that their car insurance had gone up. I mean, me personally, my car insurance when I got the renewal letter, I think. It was like three hundred pounds more, mm. and I didn't know why. I hadn't even driven the car for a couple of months because of right. the lockdown, and then now you want me to pay three hundred pounds yeah. more. So what I did, I just called them and I said, "Look, um, I'm not sure why you increased it. Is there any way you can reduce it? Mm. You know?" Um, and they reduced it. They put it back to the same price as no, before. No, like <laughs> they didn't try to fight you about it. No, no fighting. They did ask me if I've compared elsewhere, and I said I did compare elsewhere, and I actually saw it for less than what they were offering me, mm. and so they were able to bring Have it back down. Running for you, you know. Yes. So never auto renew. Yeah. Always check. Okay. Loyalty can kill you sometimes. Oh, yeah. Sorry That's to say, yeah. It's true. It can kill you sometimes. So if you can compare, I mean, if you have um, insurance coming up that's due for renewal, always compare it online. If it's car insurance, um, I mean, even with um, household insurance and different kinds of insurance, you can use the Go Compare or... Um, the one with the makeup. Oh, yeah, 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 um, yeah, yeah. Compare the, the market. market. Mm. You know, there's so many com um, comparison tools online. And so once you compare these and you realise that, oh, I can actually get it cheaper, you can even call your insurance company and see, can they reduce it to that same price? Can they price match? Mm. Or, okay, I'm just going to move to the yeah. other company because it's cheaper. I mean, what? Why? Why would you stay with someone that's charging you more? Yeah, yeah you definitely. Know? We should definitely be getting. We should. We should definitely be paying what it's it's worth and comparing it to how much yep. obviously is coming in, like our in, like our yep. incomings and stuff like that. Yeah, for real, because that's how people get finessed and that's so. all. Yeah, like, it's oh. true. Um, phone bills. I know. Um, people nowadays we spend so much on our phones. Um, sometimes you go on a phone website and they're telling you eighty pounds a month. You're like. Am I yeah. paying for the whole borough? Yeah. Or is it just for me? Like yeah. what? Like, am I sharing the data? Am I yeah. sharing the, <laughs> you know? Yeah, exactly. It's am true. I sharing the minutes with my neighbour? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. So, one of the things that's helped people is take out a SIM only contract. Yep, that's me. That's what I do. So <laughs> SIM only. Yeah. SIM only, literally. Like, yeah. listen, here's the plug, yeah? All right, cool. So you go on a certified website, right? Cool, you find a re refurbished phone. If it's like a proper phone that you want to get, get refurbished, pay a couple hundred, obviously depending on how much is coming into your account, you get me, that's all relative depending on who you are. Then get a Simone contract, obviously depending on the network that you want to be with. Give yeah. guys No, I mean free <laughs> is what it is, obviously. Yeah. What? I don't even feel like mentioning free right now, you lot are not getting no... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not in, isn't it? No, Yo, that's the team! The network is bad. <laughs> Listen, the man in my room. Like, how <laughs> bro, bro. <laughs> Yeah, so yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. <laughs> SIM only contract. If you have gone past your renewal date, maybe you didn't mm. renew, you didn't see any phone you like, call your um your phone provider and just say, look, can I get a SIM only contract? And your bill will be reduced you by a lot, mm. quite yeah. a lot. Yeah, um, you can buy your phone outright. I've noticed personally that if you buy your phone outright, you can actually get it cheaper. Mm. Yes, you can even pay it monthly if you don't want to pay it all up in one go. Mm. Um, you know, it comes out cheaper mm. with the SIM only contract than actually renewing mm -hmm. with your phone provider, yeah. which is, you know, it's quite funny that, but it's been working for a lot of people. Yeah. My final advice, um, 
I've mentioned the money saving expert quite a lot. Mm. They have a lot of good advice. I would definitely recommend yeah, that. We'll drop that down know, then. And sign up to that. They, um, I think the guy's name is Martin Lewis. Yeah, Martin Lewis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. he sends out these regular emails. They are really helpful. Really? It tells you where you can save money. Mm. If shops are doing any special um, discounts, if you really need it, yeah, of course. Yeah, he sends me a lot of emails you know. too. A lot of warnings as well to me. <laughs> 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 you know, they're doing a lot of good things there and they have this um, feature on their website which is called the Demotivator. Mm. That shows you how to how much you spend on your non-essential goods mm. and it also helps you to start spending as well. Mm. So when you, I think it, uh, it's like a, um, is a tool where you enter in some information about how much you've been spending. It actually makes you mm. look at your expenses. You know, some people will be scared to check their, yeah. their bank account oh, and stuff. That's me. You know, I've, learned, I've actually mastered the skill of, of um, transferring my, my savings into my current account without looking at my phone. So I'm just like, <laughs> just so I know that it's like Oh, you transfer your savings to, to your current account. Yeah, no, I don't put anything in my current more time. Well, she does it with her eyes closed. Yeah. Mm. Wow. And it's, that's how bad it is. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. That is wow. That's crazy. That is crazy. No, so, me. yeah, so this demotivator at, um, feature actually looks at, it makes you look at your expenses and it, you have to say, where you've been putting that non-essential money, it mm. shows you. And when you mm. say, when you see that, it's like a wake-up call. Like, wow, wow. do I yeah. spend that much in McDonald's? Mm. You know, or do Talk I spend that it. much on Uber? Yeah, yeah. you know. And yeah. so um, it will help you to stop spending on those places and to start saving. So, mm. like I said before, there's so many apps for budgeting, even saving apps. There's saving apps like um, there's Plum, mm. there's Chip. What they do, you connect it to your bank, bank account. account. Yeah, yeah. money box and as well. Yeah, money box mm. as well. That's yeah. another good one as well. I personally don't like Plum. I'm sorry. Um, because <laughs> you can't control the amounts. It just takes it and it's like, it's gone. Sorry, see ya. You know, but mm. with Chip, you can have a bit more... Um, you can you can set it to your own preference. Mm. You can change the settings accordingly. So if you want to save a lot, it will go by that. If you want to save just a little bit, it will go by that as well. But what it does, it auto saves for you. Mm -hmm. So it sees how much money you've got in your account and it takes the money. It tells you that, okay, you're going to save about nine pounds today and it will take that money and put it in your chip account. Yeah, mm -hmm. nice. So it's like a roundup, yeah? Yeah. yeah so yeah, yeah, yeah. not even a roundup. No, it just looks at it. it I don't mm -hmm. know. It smartly analyzes how much money you've got there. It kind of already knows your spending habits and your, your essential bills already. So it just takes out the money that um, is like a spare income to you that day. Mm. So it tends to be like you can do it on a weekly a weekly basis or a daily basis, however you want to set it. So, yeah. mm. That's nice. nice. Oh, yeah. And, and there's so even much. like cashbacks as well. Like, that there's free, cashbacks, People, people yeah. are saying that's free money. Like, do you mind explaining that a little bit? Um, yeah. Um, I'm not good with cash, but I need mm. to get onto this because mm. a lot of people have been saying that they've been getting money back. Um, Cashback is basically um, there's different there's different providers for this. What they do is when you spend money on particular um, retailers' websites, they look at that and they they can actually pay you the cash back as well. Mm. Um, you won't get the cash immediately. It usually is is a build up. So maybe say if you reach about five pounds, then they'll pay that out to you or something like that. Mm -hmm. There are a few out there. Um, this year, people have been making use of that a lot. I'm gonna jump on that definitely. Also. Um, like I was saying about um, supermarkets, use your club card points yeah. or um, any points that you have. I know people that use the points. I was been building up my points, and I didn't realize that you could actually spend your points. Yeah, yeah. Mm. So any like any shops that you're shopping at, if you have like loyalty points, use them. Yeah. You know, because yeah. sometimes they're just gathering up there, and sometimes they expire as well. Yeah. So even if you're gathering it up for like. Oh, you know, wow. whole year or something. Maybe it might expire. So yeah. sometimes just use oh, that. That would me, help I, I've you. got a little deal with Subway. You know, like that demo was like, Subway is just too nice. So. Wow. <laughs> I had to get, I had to get the, the card. And I like. heard even um, <laughs> Lidl. Lidl has the Lidl Plus, Plus app. Yeah. Mm. That's doing a lot of like... Um, Favours to people. 
a lot of yeah. deals that's been I mean mm. a lot of people have been talking about that at the moment you know. and I was surprised well. because I didn't know people shop at Lidl mm. you know but these these shops I know they sound like funny shops it looks like oh the they best, don't have man. anything good there but trust me they have some good there some I mean by the time you spend something there you haven't spent so, so much well. so okay. I would say give it a try you might hate it you might love it I don't know but just try it just pick a few things mm. that you know that okay it's just gonna be mm. less than a certain amount yeah Try it out and see. You might find that them yeah. way better than even the branded. I find that some of these non-branded are way better mm. than branded yeah. items. So, Definitely. You know. Thank you yeah. so much, Rosita. Just dropping Thank the you. gems. Like I'm here for it. I <laughs> definitely learned quite a few things, and I'm hoping that um, y'all did too. Um, but yeah, um, again, thank you. That thank was amazing. You so amazing. Much. amazing. Thank you. Um, so we are going to wrap up. Um, like I said, there's something very different today. So do let us know if you want um, us to discuss on anything that you think that would be relevant or would serve you best. Um, would you mind wrapping us up in prayer? Yeah, definitely. And yeah. before we obviously cover, um, cover this and we close up in prayer as well, mm. don't forget to like and subscribe, you get me, if you're new. <laughs> <laughs> For sure, that's really important. That will definitely help the YouTube algorithm. Leave us a comment as well and make sure you leave us a review as well. Let us know, obviously, like, what your thoughts were, um, what would you add, stuff like that, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, God bless you all for watching up until this point. It's been a, a, an absolute pleasure to give you guys this free game this free content these these tips apply onto your life share it with your friends and family so yeah so this is obviously going to be me and us wrapping up in prayer and then obviously we're good to go so we can just close our eyes heavenly father i just want to thank you for tonight i want to thank you for today thank you so much for the fact that you've allowed us lord father god to come onto such a platform you know in the in the heart of london in the midst of such a pandemic a lockdown but nevertheless you're letting your will be done and you're allowing us to be used as empty vessels to be able to distribute this wonderful information information that's going to be able to liberate people set people free it's going to be able to empower people and educate them on the essentials of life law Father God, I want to thank you for the the pod, um, people that are on the podcast, myself, Danielle Mazita, um, the, the cameraman at the back, call of God, those of you guys who are watching, I pray in Jesus' mighty name that from today, you lot shall be able to stick tuned with us and you lot shall be able to grow. And yeah, that's all really, Lord, we just thank you and just give us more strength to be able to do this um, confidently. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. 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 So Amen. thank y'all. Catch y'all later. And then this is queuing. Oh, so yes, I was gonna cue music, but, <laughs> you know. Um, <laughs> so make sure to follow us, our socials. Um, that will be down below. In the description box too. I think it'll be on the screen as well. So it'll be at the table DC on Instagram and on Twitter. Mm -hmm. Um, and yeah, for any live updates, you will find us over there. Oh, interact yeah. with us and whatnot. And you are always welcome to the table. Always, it where there's where a where seat for you. Hey, there's a seat at the table. There's a seat at the table. So come on down, hey, step right in. Oh, this is hey. your, this is uh, your. Step right in, take a seat. Hey, this is your, bye. 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 I know you're tired saying Jesus take the wheel. Uh, it's never ever late to come back home. I'm sick and tired of doing it alone. I've been around, round, round, round. So many people let me down, 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 down. That's no